This conference will now be recorded. The clerk will call the roll, please. Councilor Heldenbrand. Present. Councilor Arnold. Here. Councilor Oropesa. Here. Councilor Korn. Here. You have a quorum. Okay. Talk about the approval of the agenda. Okay. And I would like a miscommunication of some sort. City manager. Items. Seven, eight, and nine. Six, seven, six, seven. Well, I, which agenda do I have? I got two agendas. Oh, well, lucky you. Uh, you need to offer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got two of them. I don't know how I got two different agendas. Sure, let me help you here. I, okay. Okay. okay, so items number six, seven, and eight relating to the uh, discussion of proposed development agreement for Clover Meadow, Mac Real Estate, and William C. Dennis be removed at this point in time. So moved. I can receive, I have a motion for that. Moved. Second. All in favor by signifying by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? So being items removed the agenda. We'll have some discussion about that a little bit. Sure. Okay. Approval of minutes. Preview. Can we do both meetings or at the same time? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's one item. Meetings, uh, the minutes for the meeting of May 26 and March 24. We're for the minutes, Mr. Chairman. We have a second. A no, second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? None being motion passed. First item on the regular item is RAC lease agreements, which there are several, and they're all lumped into one item. Those being the Bravo. First one being Bravo. Alpha. We got Bravo three holdings. Yeah, Bravo. Bravo three holdings is the first one. Any discussion, please? Um, left slides. Okay. Bravo three holdings is a company that has uh, been with us for a year. They are renting one of our bunkers. It is existing of uh, 1,790 square feet and uh, proposing or considering recommendation for a new one year lease at uh, 335.63 a month, which is $2.25 a foot. What are they currently paying? Uh, $2.01. A ten percent increase. Yes. Okay. Any discussions? Do we can we approve all of these at once, Josh, or do you have to approve them separately? They have to be done separately. Okay. Yes, sir. There being no further discussion, do I hear a motion? Move the lease for Bravo Three Holdings LLC, Mr. Chairman. Oh, second. Will that be to consent or the full city council? I do it by consent. consent. You will make a motion by consent. By consent. Thank you. Yeah. I'll second. All in favor, signify by aye. 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 No opposition. Please. Item number B. B. This is a, a group or a tea hanger space. This is for general aviation. I have several of them on the agenda, so they'll go pretty quickly. Um, so I don't have to describe every property the exact same. Uh, the square footage changes a little bit for each of them, but this one is for 1,175 square feet. It does include utilities and has water at it at the facility, but no bathrooms. Um, and that will be just orchestral anesthesia, Chris Lynn, uh, coming in for another one year lease at $244.80 per month at uh, $250 per square foot. 
currently paying. Moving them up from 204. Chairman, I have a question about these. Okay. Um, I noticed going through these that two of these proposed leases are 293750 and three of them are 2505. Let me back up. Okay, so you all, one row of the fingers is building 120 and the other one's 119. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. So, why is there a difference of round figures, 400 bucks? Square footage. Square footage. And prints different. The end hangers, NT hangers are a little bit larger than the internal. Okay. Yeah, it's all 250. I calculated earlier, it's all 250 a square foot. Okay. So we're just off. So. I have a when did these leases originally expire? Are they still operating or are they already expired? There are some that have been in holdover, um, but the pr primarily we're trying to get them all up to speed. They've been in holdover because we had a moratorium since the tenant. And we've communicated all of this to the individuals? Yes. They're all okay with these rates? Yes. Okay. Mr. Chair, can I ask a question? I'm, I'm assuming that these or this particular one is being used for storage. It's for airplane storage. Aircraft. Aircraft, small general aviation aircraft. So the bathroom really doesn't matter whether they have it or not. Uh, it depends, but yes. <laughs> it's what they expect for storing. They'll pull their airplanes out and then go wherever they're uh, wanting. Well, they got they got one in the, in the airplane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plan for it. <laughs> yeah, there are no restroom facilities out there. Correct. Not even a water body, is there? Is this the only hanger that's got water? Uh, both T hangers have water in them. Both. Just for a hose. Uh, both 119 and 120 both have water access. Okay. okay. Can we do them all at once? We have to again do each one in Two minutes. Each one. Come on. We don't have to discuss them all, Do I hear a motion? Oh, let's go. So I think first. Okay. Board of Get their fair share. I'll make a motion for Kester Anastasia to consent to add to the consent items for their lease agreement. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by aye. 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 There being no opposition, so passed. Next item, Larry right, Parker. This is pretty much the same cookie cutter, um, but it's for a different tenant, Larry Parker. Right. Are your motion or any discussion? Are you in a hurry all of a sudden? I'm not going to stay here until seven o'clock. <laughs> well, why? We, we managed to stay till one thirty in the morning at city council meeting. Why are you in such a hurry for now? I'm not doing it. Okay. Um, I'll move Mr. for consent agenda. Let Mr. Lane Parker's hangar, T hangar space, building 102, space 2, 2505. Second. Discussion? There being none, all in favor signify aye. 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 Opposition is there. Item passed. Carlton Walker. Carlton Walker is also a general aviation pilot that is in, um, he's in another space, but he's adding this space to the independent. He was with a tenant shared before, and he's wanting to go on his own in this space. And the other gentleman is happy to let him do that. So Mr. Wadsworth has decided not to renew into the new one year lease. That's the only difference with this one. So Mr. Walker has two spaces out there now, correct? Okay. He got a pliable airplane in one when he's put together in the other. I know that's a project beyond. <laughs> that keeps him away from his wife. <laughs> Some kind of foreign training plane or something. Well, that's that's wow. a real hot rod, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I know a hot rod when I see one. That one's a hot rod. Yeah. So move to the consent agenda. 
I won't cut anybody else off. Okay. You're fine, Nick. Oh, well, it's your turn. Why don't you do it? Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> no, I, okay. I, I, I do move for uh, for consideration to approve Mr. Larry Parker to enter. Well, Mr. Walker. Uh, Carl, 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 uh, Carlton yeah. Walker. Yeah. To enter into a lease on hangar number 119, which is two, two spaces. Oh, this is phase two. This is phase He's two. He's current on this underneath phase one. Yes. Okay. Phase two. Okay. Your consent item. Consent. Yes. I'll second. Any discussion? There being none. All in favor. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposition? There being none. So moved. Clayton Hightower, at least. I'm familiar with this one. Yes, he's also a general aviation pilot uh, storing an aircraft in the T hangar changes, um, and it's just another renewal of a 12 month lease. Yeah. Okay. Discussion? I'll make a motion. Uh, I'd like to make a motion um, to for consideration for Clayton Hightower a lease for hangar. What is it? 120 space six uh, to be added to the consent as a consent item. Second. Any discussion? There being no discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed so passes. Kurt Becker. Kurt Becker is also in team hangers. Um, 120 space four, he has as a general aviation aircraft as well. Uh, he will be entering another 12 month lease. He's an existing tenant. Okay, your motion. Mr. Chair, I move for recommending approval to authorize Mr. Kurt Becker to enter into a lease uh, for T hangar number 120 space four. On consent agenda. On consent, yes, sir. Second. Second. Any discussion? There being none, <laughs> all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. There being no opposition, motion so passes. Next item, Jared Putman. Jared Putman is also a general aviation pilot. He is housed in T Hangar 120, Space 3, uh, with an aircraft. Okay. Your motion. So, so um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to consider recommending approval to authorize Jared Putman to enter a lease for T hangar number 120 space three to be added to four consent. Second. Any discussion? There being no discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Being motion so passes. Next item is Thurston Woods. Kirsten Woods um, is requesting space in building number 1776. It is out on the airfield. Um, he's been using it for several, several, several years. Um, I don't even know how many, but a long, long, long time. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's just a continuum of a 12 month lease with him um, out there. He utilizes part of the building and, and the FAA utilizes the other half of that building. Correct. So we're housed in that building with equipment as well for the um, airport. And we are going to do a 12% increase on his rent. Um, he will be going up to 225 a square foot with a monthly installment of 337.13. There are no utilities that we provide for him out there and there's no water either. No water either. No, no. no. Lights. Right situation. Yes. And question would be why the others are 250 and this is 225. No water. No water. And it's really the quality of the building is a little different too. Um, as far as I really don't know how much longer Mr. Thurston Woods will be in there. We're kind of trying to bump the rate up enough for him to. Yeah. And he's fine with his rate. He may back on this one for me, but we're going to attempt to fire them. So, um, this one usually goes with it because he doesn't want to have to move his stuff. 
Just question him. He doesn't know what the price is? He doesn't as of right now. He's been sent the lease for him to look over. He has just not replied to me at this time. I usually will send it through legal. Um, he has the option to not sign the lease once it's approved. So I've done that a couple times with the tenants that I don't hear from regularly. He's an older gentleman. It's hard for me to get a hold of him. How long does he have the lease for his approval? Uh, a couple weeks. That just doesn't sound right to me. That that we would come in and approve something without his knowledge. It has happened a couple of times. Um, you know, they have the right to refuse it at the end. They don't have to sign their lease. So, you know, it gives them time to allow you to make amendments before they sign and say, yes, I'm on board for everything you're doing between legal and counsel. So, he has he had responded, but he's aware. Yes. Yeah, they're all aware when their leases are coming due. Oops, I Taylor put it back on. Huh? What'd you say? Table it. Table will put it at the end of the meeting. No. You gotta postpone it is what you have to do. Okay, postpone then. Well, I mean, if he, if you've given him an email notice, right? And you've given that all of them? And so they, um, they, they have a right of refusal. Okay, so I don't understand why we wouldn't just get them out there and continue the motion. Well, continue maybe, the actual maybe process. he's moving his stuff out. I don't know. I don't know what he's got out there in the middle of the airfield. Yeah. Um, Not my business. I don't know, but has he communicated anything to you? Not as of the, today, no. But he does know about the amount. That, that's the one that I'm, I'm. He's been notified of the amount that is coming or that has been proposed. He's just not communicated back with me at this time. It's not unstandard for that to happen. He just hasn't acknowledged it. No. And he can refuse it. He has every right to refuse it. This is not an executed document at this time. What's his current lease term? Has it already expired? If he is, yes. He's in holdover. So. We have a motion to postpone. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Well, I'm uh, just going to vote no, so it does, there is no need for discussion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm just going to vote no, so there's no need for discussion. Yeah, my question of discussion is, is how long ago was he absolutely contacted? Two months ago? <laughs> Two months ago? I have, I have not ever had a conversation with Mr. Woods. Um, you sent it out return receipt. Yes, everything's always return receipt. And you got notification that that came back to you? No, I not a red receipt, I have a, that delivered receipt, but not a red receipt. Mm, you read receipt via email. So you didn't send it you certified. Certified. I, didn't, I don't receipt. send the lease request out certified mail. No. I do if they're for signature, but not for um, just proposing the leases. Well, let me ask, have you received payment from him? Yes. Okay, so he's continued to pay. Yes. What's he paying now? Um, Two eighty-six a month. Two eighty-six. He's going to three thirty-seven. Two ninety-six. My apologies. Two ninety-six is what he's currently paying. Yes. And he's going to three thirty-seven. That's not that much of an increase. So, I hope we ought to have a little more interest in this project. Right. Yeah, I have a problem with just being two weeks out notifying him. Uh, so. Part of that has been the moratorium of the leases. I have been working on them, and but I've had hands tied a little bit about negotiating or discussing leases with tenants. You tied your hands. They were given a moratorium. From February till June first. Or city, right. city manager gave them more current. Right. And here we are, third week of June. Yes, sir. So, any further discussion? So there being a motion to postpone this item, which was seconded, all in 
favor of postponing signify by saying aye. 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 No. And all those. You uh, get the. You get to chime well, in. If it dies, it dies. I mean, two, two, it dies. So that motion, I mean, it just doesn't go anywhere on a two, two. And so this doesn't necessarily mean that this gets approved either. So, so I'm going to vote with postponing. Okay. And I would like to see you send a certified return vote letter to this gentleman sure. so that you know that he's received it. Everyone else has communicated to you, but I'd like to see you send a certified return receipt requested so that you know it. And then you can come back to us next month. And if he didn't acknowledge it, then we'll move ahead on him. Okay. So. Okay. Next item. On building code, consider recommending the council office to consider adoption of proposed ordinance in chapter six of the Roswell City Code. Assume that's you, Mr. Mears. Yes. There we go. There we go. Okay. Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the committee, this is a bit of a uh, housekeeping item. Every year, the state of New Mexico adopts and updates the Uniform Building Code or specific sections of the Uniform Building Code. Most recently, they have adopted, next slide, please. Uh, most recently, they have adopted the an updated 2021 Uniform Mechanical Code and Uniform Plumbing Code. Uh, pursuant to state law, uh, we have six months from the time the state adopts it to adopt it into our own code. We were notified about 60 days ago that the state had passed. So at this point, we are just moving through the process of amending our own development code and uh, bringing us into compliance with state law. Sure, they make things easier when they put new codes in. Right? <laughs> sure, they make things easier when they put new codes in. Oh yeah, well, yes, they make things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You ready for a motion? No, I'm ready for a motion. Let's try this on the consent agenda for ordinance. It's for, isn't it for a ring? No. I do not believe the way our current ordinance is written. Carrie. Parker, I guess Parker is. Well, this is for advertisement. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is for okay. advertisement. Because we are, uh, because this is an ordinance amendment, it does have to go through the normal ordinance pro amendment process, which requires. Okay. Move we advertise for. So I think uh, just let me jump in here. It's not, I think it's technically, you're technically able to put a first reading on the consent agenda, but I've never seen anybody do it. Okay. So well, we'll just go ahead and put it on the agenda to amend chapter six of the Roswell City Code relating to building codes. Okay. It, I'm easy. Any further Aye. discussion? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 There being no opposed, motion so passes. Water suppression systems or uh, different things, um, and, and they come getting upset. It's really something that we're having to require to, to have across the, the state, which goes down to us. So. State always does its favors. Yeah. <laughs> they just do great things for us. Someday we'll get the home rule. Maybe. Yeah. That we won't have to mess with a lot of these items. Yeah. Get my email on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we have item number three, which is consider recommending the council authorized to advertise for a public print. Yes. I'm going to go say something here real quick. I have two different sets. You do. Of agendas. And this was to be a discussion. This is, this is, right up him. This is his yeah. deal. And ours is the uh, governing. Body rules of order. Yeah, see, I have a different, I gotta get rid of this agenda. 
I want to vote like that. Better, Jim. Let me have that chunker. I'll get rid of it for you. Get rid of that. I'll take care of it. Again, now the item is item number three, discuss and consider. Yeah, taking care of it. Got it. Discuss and consider a proposal to amend the governing body. Right. Rules of the board. Initiated by his yes, crew. Initiated by. Yes, sir. I hope that everybody had a, an opportunity to look over the uh, proposed rules of order. There is one thing that I, I think needs to be taken out. And in uh, an additional language being added in. For for a number of years, uh, I, I think we we've had problems determining when an item goes to when it doesn't concerning the the committees. And so what I did is I pretty much restructured the old uh, rules of order and added some some language and took out a lot of the the old language. And uh, uh, to kind of try and, and uh, address uh, the issues of, of when a standing committee can deny a uh, an item, and if that item can continue to hold council or not, and and uh, and I think. Uh, One of the things that, that we we have uh, on city council agenda on page 39, I think our legal department added some language to see if we can select one or the other or or neither, or neither one of them. Uh, because the way it stands right now, as far as uh, uh, city Council agenda items are concerned. Uh, I think our, our regular uh, rules of order indicate that the mayor can place items, the city manager can place items, or or five uh, councilors can can request it in writing in, in order to to uh, place it in the uh, on on the city council agenda. And when I when I, uh, I rewrote them, uh, I failed to put in the city manager being able to 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 put things on the agenda, and that's where you you suggested uh, the mayor can or the mayor cannot. The city manager, obviously, the city the manager. manager yeah. yeah. There was just discussion at council that the language of the current rules was ambiguous. And to the extent that it is ambiguous, this would be an opportunity to clarify if you wanted to. Or you can continue as always and strike both options. What's our current? The current rule is uh, I think identical to this minus the red language that's been added to that. Yeah, I don't have the governing body rules in front of me, but as I recall, the language in the proposal is actually very similar to what we have in our current governing body rules. So it's like we right. kind of discussed last time a little ambiguous as to it, but we always just assumed that since the city manager sets the agenda, he's able to put things on, but that's not stated explicitly. And so we're kind of, if this move, item's gonna move forward based on that discussion last time, we kind of looked for some direction from the committee, what you guys would prefer an explicit yes or an explicit no. No, I don't have no no problems with the city manager being able to put uh, things on the agenda. Well, I do. Okay. Well, the, the, I think these items should go through the if he's going to put them on, they either go through council members or they go through the mayor. And you don't bypass. We have committees for a reason, and I've heard that over and over since I've been elected here that we have committees for a reason and items go on either via the committee or the mayor. And if the city manager wants to get something put on, he can go to committee or he can go to the mayor. 
And if it's an emergency item, you can go to the mayor. But I don't think, I think because of our strong committee structure, and I keep saying, because I've heard some councilors say, well, if we're gonna make everything go through budget committee, then why do we have these other committees? Well, we don't. So I'm not in favor of the city manager being allowed to put items on the agenda without going through the proper channels. So, so what's the fix? The fix is right in here, they have the fix. Okay. The city manager shall not place an item on the agenda without being directed to do so by the mayor or six council members. Okay. So, so discussion. The city, so what you're saying is the the language that says the city manager may place an item on the agenda in red goes away. Goes away. Eliminate that. Right. That's what I'm talking about here. So I have a couple questions. Um, if I may, um, first off, I'd like to ask um, Mr. Matthews, um, what are the pros and cons? What is the benefit to having the city manager be able to place items? Is there something, you know, other than what we kind of know at hand, um, where it could be a con if he wasn't able to do that? I think I, I would just think it would be a convenience thing if an issue rose up and it needs to go to get, get to council quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, then he would have that authority to do it. But I don't think there's ever been a problem that with the mayor being available, even if it was by phone right. and a text or email to confirm that he approves that that okay. goes on the agenda. I don't see that it would create no okay. heartache with Joe or anybody that, okay. they, that he'd have to get either go through the committee or go through the mayor to get something placed on the agenda. Because okay. if it's that important, the, the mayor's going to do it. Yep. Very good. Well, and because I just want to look at all sides of that, but okay, very good. Yeah, and I look at that, I leave names blank. Doesn't matter who is right. who's who. Right. Just names are blank. It's just a process. So I think Councillor. Yes, my only concern that I have with the language, I, I have no concern if this needs to be changed, but the six council members, because once you hit six, uh, uh, people can very quickly accuse of a rolling quorum to have gotten to that six or five does not institute that. So my suggestion would be as if the language is something I'll desire to change that strike that six to five. And, and the reason that, that the language is six is because the the resolution that we approve for the Open Meeting Act it doesn't say, the, the language says majority, which majority in this case would be six. That's the only reason that it's it's six. The language where I'm sorry. The the resolution that we passed for the uh, open meeting site that we have to to do every year. Yes, sir. We passed it in February, March, whatever. Because that that language and I I I voice my my same objection to to Parker. And. Yeah. And basically, he said, we're just following the, the policy of the state. And so that's that's where the, the six come in. Yeah. Councillor uh, Oropesa is referred to is in the, we adopt, we adopt a sort of recommended attorney general uh, resolution for Open Meetings Act. And one of the things in there says that uh, and I believe it's emergency meetings can be requested at the uh, based on six counselors. I think it's emergency meetings was what that one was. And the question came up at the time: Isn't that a rolling quorum? And I had and I said kind of, I mean, well, this is what the attorney general tells us is the right way to do it. So that's one thing. And then the other part of it is, as long as they're not discussing the the merits of the question, in then it's not going to be a rolling quorum. On the other hand, uh, the concern is there that it does create the possibility that you're going to have create a quorum uh, by having it a requirement of six. So it's kind of I, that's what the attorney general put in there. I, I raise my eyebrows at it too, but um, that's that's apparently okay as far as he's concerned, as long as you don't discuss the merits of the question and just the procedure of we need to get this onto the agenda. I can draw that line. I'm not totally sure. I don't, I don't think that kind of stuff. You talk about the specific item and say, how are you going to vote? And 
to get into that rolling quorum. But if you just broadcast that we've got a problem in this area, then I think that's all everybody. Yes, Mr. Chairman, yeah, I won't, I won't uh, take up all your time, but I, 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 I see what he's saying, and I do remember Councilor Pace something about that at that time, and I think per part of that discussion when that came about was with each Attorney General, there's going to be a different uh, choice of what uh, you know these things are and what their opinions are uh, at the adoption of that during the time frame of that Attorney General being there. I think we're safe. I think that with, if, if, a, if a, an attorney general comes later and makes a change of his opinion, then we've got to go back and change our governing rules of order as well. I'd say you're, you're safe with your five, and then there, there is no question. There is no fight as to whether someone was trying to or was not trying to, right. uh, where the conversation was. That's just my opinion. Well, I don't disagree with that opinion, but the fact the appearance would look yes, could be misconstrued. If you're five, there is no appearance problem. Right. Six, there's an appearance problem. Whether the, you know, then you got to defend the situation. Yes. Is there an actual issue with us keeping it at five or moving it to five or is it, do we have to go with the six? No. Okay. Well, five I'm, is I'm, what is in our current rules. Okay. I'm for the five. Okay. I have no well, problem. We can, we can change it to five. Thank you. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. So well, that's a friendly amendment, so we need to clean this up. Uh, would that also include number two as well? Yes. Yes. Okay. Anything that, that uh, uh, relates to six it should be changed to five. Okay. What other item are you talking about? And there's a, an item on uh, uh, item four. four. Item two and item four uh, be referred five. to... Uh, Six. Another way to do this is refer back to the thing we have to pass it here. We got to pass that. We could just say as contained in our Open Meetings Act. Be a clear way of doing. It. So we need to the Open Meetings Act. Uh, what again? What that was referring to was calling emergency meetings, which is a little different from what we're talking about right now, which is placing items on an agenda. So, I don't know that you could refer to the Open Meetings Act resolution directly like that. It would be to kind of get there a little differently. I just I suggest. Okay. Okay. These uh, proposed uh, uh, changes were made before we even went to the. Uh, the uh, New Mexico uh, Municipal, League. Municipal League. So if you look on page 38, uh, Roman numeral uh, five, it says upon recusal, the council member is not considered uh, president for quorum and so forth and so on. If I, if I, where at? On page 38. Line 21 on page. Line three. Line three. Oh, it's at the very top. Oh, at the very top. If I understood correctly, the the uh, the presentation from the individual that was doing the rules of order or Robert rules of order, I understood that if a person uh, recuses himself, it still can be counted as part of the quorum. He just won't. He or she won't be able to uh, obviously vote or discuss. Or discuss, yeah. Right. And so, in order to be in compliance, I would say that we take off uh, is not considered uh, all that language, and and uh, and and start up again with the word is not deemed to be voting uh, voting for purposes of determining whether there has been a majority uh, vote. Of those voting present, so all we're doing is saying this person is recusing himself. He's not. Be, he's not going to be voting. He's not going to be discussing. But he's part of the quorum. But he's part of the quorum. Well, I, I would suggest. Can I just jump in? I would suggest that that is a little problematic because if if they're counted as part of the quorum but they don't vote, then effectively voting no, because they have to 
majority of, the, of those present and voting. So if you count them as part of those present, as, as part of the quorum, then you need to meet a majority and they're part of whether or not you meet a majority by not voting, they effectively vote no. The point of taking them out of the quorum when they recuse themselves is that then the amount of people you need to hit a majority is reduced, except in those cases where you have to have like a majority of the entire governing body. So that's just one question is that it makes it hard to recuse yourself because you effectively vote no because you know, you're still counted as part of reaching majority, but you don't vote. So effectively that's a no. So technically a, a no vote is what he's saying. Well, it, it, that's the effect of it. You're trying to say, I don't want any part, a recusal is simply, I don't want any part. I'm not saying yes or no, but since right. I'm part of the quorum reaching a majority so it counts me, but I'm, I'm not contributing to the yes, therefore by definition, I'm contributing to the no. Whereas if you're not counted as part of the quorum for that vote, then you neither contribute nor do you uh, vote no. I'm saying. So the thing to do then would be just to leave it over from the quorum. To leave it. To leave it as, as is. Is that what you're suggesting? Yes. A, a, yes. That's what I. That's what I'm suggesting. They're not counted for quorum purposes. So if one goes down, then you're nine. And then you you win. You don't have to have a six vote. You can have a five vote to get that done. Mm -hmm. you, yes. Yeah, exactly. And and that won't work for a certain. Some votes require an entire a majority of the entire governing body. That mm -hmm. by statute, and there's nothing we can do about that in those cases. If you recuse yourself, that is effectively a no. But we can't we can't help that. But but in the vast majority of votes, it's just the majority of those present in voting. So if you're not counted as among those present in voting for that vote, then just like you said instead of having to get six, you now only have, you have to get a majority of nine, so five. So that, in the majority of votes, that work. And the, the only reason that I, I bring it up is because based on the information that was, uh, that, that was presented at, at the Municipal League, I, I specifically remember the gentleman that did the uh, uh, presentation and I think I even asked this question. You did. And and uh, and, and I was told that uh, that even if you recuse yourself, that you would that member would still be part of of the quorum. So I mean I I have I have no problems either way. Well, and of course, if, if your recommendation is that we leave it. Leave it as is, then I, I have no problems with that. Okay, yeah, and I mean, as far as Robert's rules go, I mean, I, I don't have Robert's rules in front of me, so I can double check that. I'm sure whatever you're, the person you talk to at the municipal league got it right, but of course, our governing body rules will trump the uh, Robert's rules to the extent that there's any difference between them. You know, the, the other the other issue that we've had throughout the years, or at least that I've been in the on the council, is when you when you talk about a, a an issue, sometimes it goes to two or three different committees. So you, you have the possibility of one committee saying no, the possibility of one committee saying yes. And so at the end of the day, it still goes to full council. And if, and I'm saying if the committees should have the power that I believe they should have, then whatever action a committee takes should stand. And, and, let, me, and in my let me just, uh, just suggest something here. So, I mean, the reason the, the difference is normally, like when you hear about like Congress or the state legislature, Items start at the main body and then they're referred to a committee. And then if the committee doesn't refer it back, it effectively dies in that committee because it never comes back. So we have this idea of exclusive jurisdiction, right? Either if a committee has it, it's got it, right? And nobody else can touch it until it sends it back again. And so if they don't send it back out again, it dies in that committee. Um, our, the way we've done it in the past is a bit different. In fact, the way we've always done it, the way we do it now is it doesn't start at the governing body and they get referred to a committee. Rather, they come up from the bottom and go to the council, so they start at the committee level, an item will be introduced for the first time at the committee and then be referred up. So 
So it's a bit of a different system. And the only, the, I, I appreciate what Councilor Orpesa is saying, and I, I agree the dueling committees can be, can create uh, confusion and headaches. The only other, the only concern I would have about that is you would get basically a race to the committee. So whichever committee was first, they would win, right? And so that's kind of, you know, that's a little bit arbitrary. I would just suggest that. Well, just recently, we we had a, a an issue with, uh, I believe it was infrastructure and general services. Mm -hmm. It went to infrastructure first, and 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 it got it, it got approved to go forward. It went to infrastructure first. Yeah, it went to infrastructure first, and so when it came to general services, we're saying, what is the use of us taking taking the uh, action on it because it's going to go anyway. So it seems like a waste of time. Right. So what I, well, what I, I and let me, let me, uh, I created a, uh, some language, an amendment to the rules of order, which would go under B3A, would be number three, three A, and I didn't have time to, to make a, a, a copies. But essentially, this is the language that I came up with, and it says, in a situation where it, where it is determined that an agenda item should be reviewed by more than one standing committee, a progression process should be determined to establish which committee will hear the item first and what committees it needs to be referred to next. Example, if it is determined that an item needs to be reviewed by the General Services Committee, the Infrastructure Committee, and the Finance Committee, and it is determined the progression process should be General Services first, uh, the Infrastructure Committee second, and the Finance Committee third. The General Services Committee will address the item first. If the General Services Committee votes to recommend approval of the item, the next level infrastructure committee will hear the item and determine whether whether to recommend approval of the item to the next level, which would in this case would be finance committee. The finance committee will then address this issue and determine whether to recommend consideration of approval to the full council. If the vote at any level of the progression process ends in a failed vote, the item will be considered failed and will not proceed to the next level. However, if the vote ends up in a tie vote, the chairperson of the respective committee can entertain a motion to send the item to the next level without a recommendation. If the motion to send to the next level is approved, the item will proceed to the next level without a recommendation. If the motion to send to the next level is denied, the item will not proceed to the next level and will be considered dead. Would be my my amendment to the rules of order in order to address the double, double and triple uh, times the uh, the issue gets discussed in in uh, separate committees. You think we can get copies of this? Yeah, Councilor, I, the language you read has a passive voice there. Who's determining the order of the committees? I'm just curious. Well, that's my that, I, I would I would think it would be staff. Either be the mayor or be the city manager. My question is why do they have to go through? Why did they have to go through too? That's fair. Mr. Councilor Perry. Mr. Chairman, uh, Councilor Pesa, I, I, uh, let me bring up an example of one of the problems that happened that I'm agreeing with with Councilor Pesa on. Uh, it, it's uh, it's something you either really loved or really didn't love, and that's the rocket ship. Uh, that's a great example to bring into this. You had a situation where one committee, it went before and it failed uh, in that committee. And instead of, in my opinion, following protocol, it was just taken to another committee and then it went forward. In all reality, each of these committees, I think that it would be good for us all to understand, including myself, these uh, committees really have no power or authority. What it is is these committees are vetting places. And that's where the importance is. We're vetting 
process for the rest of council to keep us all from having to be in hour long meetings every month over and over. So we're part of that vetting process. So in all, in, in all reality, that what should have happened with that with that rocket art, if it made it to a committee and it the motion failed, then it goes on to full council with out a recommendation because that if it's a two to two it didn't fail it just failed to get enough folks to go uh, to, to to go forward with a recommendation that's all we're doing as chairman of infrastructure i make a motion uh with the with a vote vote, vote of four to one or what, three to one or whatever in infrastructure to recommend to approve that's what these committees do we recommend to approve or we can also say without recommendation from the legal committee I move X, Y, and Z. The committee should not be a place for four counselors or two counselors, really, if that's all it takes to, to cause it to stop. <clears throat> two counselors, in my opinion, should not have the authority to stop a full governing body from moving forward in business. So it can go forward with a positive recommendation, go forward with a negative recommendation, or go forward with no recommendation whatsoever. But a committee structure, as, as I have seen it, should not be stopping the 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 actions that a full city council should be taking. So I agree with Councilor Pesa. These things shouldn't be going to numerous committees over and over again. It should be one committee that's vetting the process and then sending it to full council. Like if council then decides, oh, we decide we'd like uh, finance to take a look at this, uh, or we would like for general services to take a look. At it, then you've got direction from the governing body. That, that's just my thought on that. See, and the counter to that, in my opinion, is what does the committee purpose is? If you can, if you can have full discussion at, at, at city council, why waste our time in a committee level discussing something and come up with a two to two vote and it's still gonna go to, to council? At that point, I mean, you're going to be doing the, the same thing at full council that you do at, at committee level and probably be even better because then you have all the council there and don't have to to, to depend on, because you're saying it, it shouldn't be two, two votes to, to kill something, but it only takes four votes or three votes actually to send it to full council. But, but they're not approving anything. Uh, as chair of, of, of this committee, y'all didn't approve any leases with the airport. Oh, it's all recommendation. You, you have, you've decided we've done enough vetting that we feel it's comes to the floor full council. Then full council, if you have a, if one of them that you have a problem with as a single counselor, you can pull that off that consent and we can totally hear that. But uh, the vetting process, that the vetting process for every single item that goes through Finance Committee, how long was our last Finance Committee meeting, Mr. Chairman? It, it was lengthy, and we got a lot of information out of it, but but if, if we took that with every council meeting, we'd be having to meet weekly for those three or four hours. So it's that vetting process, but it also keeps intact the fact that I have no more authority than Councilor Heldebrand, yeah. and I, uh, uh, Chairman Corn has no more authority as Chair of Finance than you who do not sit on finance. He is just overseeing that committee that's doing the vetting process that then brings it forward to full council. Unless it's voted down. If it's, vo if it's, vote if it's voted to postpone, historically, and I think that if we were to talk, and maybe Parker or Josh has an opinion, and I'm wrong, and I'm, I'm, I can surely be wrong, uh, even if something is uh, voted no, the vote is not no, it's not happening. The vote is this committee does not recommend. So it, the item still goes to full council, but without the recommendation. And then that chair would then explain why we do not feel like this is the best process. There again, it keeps two counselors. I know there's four on a committee, but it keeps two from completely taking away eight others ability to have a say on an item and that's the vetting process as i see it oh that's that's the way it works yes sir yeah. i mean that's the reason why you have committees is to, I'm, to I'm, cut gate. I'm kind of actually agreeing with council or pace on that um it's maybe a waste of time for the committees if you're just gonna because uh, i don't know that the legislators do that well, i mean once it dies the there it dies the legislative process 
and the mayor's not here, so I can't tell you exactly. Well, yes, I can. In the legislative process, the Speaker of the House assigns the case, and then many comes out with the report, either pass, do not pass, or in the legislature as chairman, if I didn't want to hear an item, it'd get buried in the filing cabinet. But it never got hurt. But it started with the full chamber that sent it to that committee. Well, and there's procedural votes that you can make to change, although it's awful hard to do against the speaker because you elect him the first day of the session. In the Senate, it's the uh, minority leader that actually decides that stuff. And he sends, sends a note up on the bill jacket and says this needs to go to legal, needs to go to Senate Finance or whatever they call the committees now. And there's a vote on it. Then when the committee gets done, the first committee gets done, then there's a report brought down. And that's another shot. If it if my bill and I can get enough people to vote affirmative, then we can actually bring something called blasting out of committee um, and bring something to the floor that may or may not have ever been heard by any committee. But that's it's a laborious process. I haven't been parts of that in the past. But I know how much work it is. And, and Mr. Chairman, you, you know, as I do, neither the county nor the city on those levels of government historically have not operated on the same foundation and 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 ways of, of doing things as the legislator does. The process is much there under Mason's rules, not Robert rules. Right. But I can tell you that the, that the county commission in my eight years and previous to that and since that time, as when they go through the committee process, the item's dead, it's done. It's dead. And that's just the way they they play. I keep mine are just five people and to work on those committees, but that's a different animal. And I mean, I'm, I'm like you, why do we have committees if we don't, if we can't be the cut again? Just like I've got some real problems with the various committees passing stuff that's got a big dollar item and, it, and finance, it goes to city council and you vote on it. And the finance committee is supposed to be the keeper of the purse. My only disagreement with that, Mr. Chairman, would be that per statute, the finance committee is not the keeper of the purse. Per statute, the city council is the board of finance. That's in state law. N not four people of the council, the entire ten, and the mayor with his deciding vote. They are the they they are the directors of finance. They are the that they that's that's for state statute. So there again, the finance committee. When I was chair, my view of it is it was the place for the vetting process. We allowed the city manager to bring us forth a. Uh, we'll just use the budget. The budget was brought from him as, as he had met and dealt with the staff. It was vetted through that process, and the and the finance committee were the hour long gruelings that you're going through now. Uh, of determining is that in our best interest? Are there areas we want to make change? Do we want more X, Y, or Z? And then that committee sends to the the board of finance, which by state statute is the full council, saying we've done our work. Here, here, here's to you to decide if this is what you desire. It, it they are the ones who decide whether it's stopped. Or, or continues, See, not a portion of the body. There's another difference in what I've experienced in my time as a public servant was that if I wanted to go in and listen to some of those meetings with the staff, the door was open. I'm finding that to be somewhat different here. It, it, and that's another conversation, but uh, at the end of the day, the full council was the board of finance. And, and so the finance committee, as I was chair, I, I did not feel there was an, and I'm not saying you do, but I did not feel an empowerment of holding the purse strings. I felt it was a vetting process of them sending to the board of finance, according to statute, 
Well, that's fine with you, but those people we all work for out there see it different. I'm just following the state statute. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and to go down that line there, and I've, I've said it before, we've got five groups out here operating the checking account and trying to get that reeled in and controlled in a central area so that we don't have to go through these transfers and whatever we've done here in the past to, to make the budget balance because we overspent in this department. Now we got to go over here and take some transfer out of here. I see where you, I mean, you're following statute, but I also see where, where, where Councillor Corn is saying, we've got everybody that's in the checkbook mm -hmm. and you reconcile it at some point in time. And I guess you're saying full council will reconcile that. So, like, what is the purpose of the finance committee then? Tell me that. that What's the purpose of the yeah, finance committee? To, to vet and to bring something forward to full council if we want to disabolish. And there are councils out there that do not have these committees, but they are also councils who have five employees to their entire. And there lies a big difference. So, so, so now you've got a situation. If we want to have full time jobs for seven thousand dollars a year, we, we can do that. You know, <laughs> and and I'm ready to put the time into it. But the, if we allow the process to work, and I'm I'm in agreement. I, I don't want you to think that I'm against what what Councilor Pace is saying. I understand the frustration because I've seen situations where I said uh, that we that shouldn't be the way we, it, it's done. Well. And, and and I get that, but the vetting process is really, and this is just my opinion, based upon what we have currently. I agree because what you, the example you used was the rocket was, yes, sir. was didn't pass out of one committee. Well, I didn't like that answer, so I run to another committee? Right. I don't think that's right. But, and it actually goes against what the the ordinance says, I mean, and I actually would like a little bit of clarification because as I'm reading what's in front of me on page 44, uh, section 6A, number three, which you just fixed, but as I'm I'm actually reading it, it, it contradicts kind of what I comprehended from you earlier, saying that, you know, that this is a vetting and it, we're just voting to, uh, to um, recommend or not recommend. Um, this basically says, it dies, if that's the way I'm interpreting number three. Um, but remember, these are, are proposed changes to the, the ordinance as it stands okay. right so now. This isn't how it is now. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, but, but the way it is right now. Can I just, let me just what? make a comment here, everybody. Uh, so uh, jumping off to of what Councillor Perry has mentioned, we can put things in the governing body rules if we want to, but at the end of the day, any action by the governing by a majority of the quorum of the governing body is 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 an action of the body. So I don't care if all five committees voted no. If if the governing body itself took up the item and voted by a majority to approve it, none of the by law the committees can only recommend things. That's what it is. An action of the governing body will be an action of the governing body. The the, the committees themselves have no actual existence under state law. They're in our ordinances. But at the end of the day, if it, no matter what a committee does, if a majority of the governing body or a quorum of the governing body decides to approve or disapprove something, that is the action. And so we can we can have rules where we say if a committee says that no, then it doesn't move forward. But if, you know, for example, if a committee, let's say that four members, let's say that there's a committee and all four of them vote no. But then they come and, uh, you know, the mayor or five counselors, five other counselors put it on the agenda and, the, and then the governing body approves yes. it. Notwithstanding that all four members oh, of that committee oh, said right. no, it is now a violation of the governing body. And the, the, that, that's in here. Yeah. I don't but, think any of us have a problem with what you just said, Parker. Sure. Uh, that, but if a committee goes no, and then, like your your example, Councillor Perry, I didn't like your answer, so I'll just take it to another committee because that committee said it's not going to the governing body. Examples, and I won't go through many particulars, but in the past, as chairman, I remember very specifically there were times when I was chairman of the uh, Building and Lands Committee, which is no longer. We voted no on some things. Uh, one of them, in particular, I'll give you the case that the uh, I was chairman with the state police building that they're in. 
we find out, oh, wow, we own this building. You remember that, Mike? We found out we own the building uh, because there was a land lease for 30 years, and after that, we get the building. Right. Well, that sounded wonderful to a lot of people, uh, but but for, for me, um, I, it didn't sound good because we've got a 30-year-old building because the air conditioners aren't working right, new things that are up to date need to be done, and they're wanting us to fix it all. As chair of that committee, uh, we I convinced that we voted no against the against receiving that building, let the state keep it. Well, that no then had to go to full council. Still, it was a vote. It wasn't squashed in that committee because I and that committee did not have the authority to make a decision on behalf of the governing body. So even though the, the, the determination was no, it went to full council with a recommendation not to approve. Right. And so that's a good example of where a no is very viable of moving forward to allow the other councilors their opportunity to, to have a say. But you, your example that you used earlier, though, you had an item that was no. Yes, sir. It didn't go to the governing body. It should have. That's my problem. I, I do not think not go to the governing body. It, How did that get I, I can't say. I was not. I don't think I was on the, the council during that time, but I do remember it was problematic. It, it, it should have gone to the council with, without recommendation, and it did not. And the problem that, that we have throughout the years is depends on the, the item. If it gets a two to two vote, mm -hmm. it dies in committee. But if, if you take another item and it's a two to two vote, then automatically it goes to full council. That's wrong. And, and that is wrong. And, and, and that's yeah. the reason to. It should be the same consistently. Exactly. And I'm, I'm closed. No, it should be the same. Yes, sir. No. You can't. You can't discriminate right. at all. I agree wholeheartedly. And so what I put in here is if it's a two to two vote, then you do have that ability to for the, the chair to entertain a, a motion to send to full council. No, no, no recommendation. We already did one of those in finance. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. sir. We did. We, did. Council. we just need to be consistent. Yes, sir. And we need I rules that not. say that so that it doesn't leave it up to somebody's determination or how they feel that day. Oh. It's not great. <laughs> well, that's a problem. That's a problem when you're making sausage, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> you're hearing it. <laughs> I mean, we would we would pull all sorts of shenanigans in the legislature and come up with a floor amendment, complete rewrite of the legislation, trying to take care of those little problems that somebody may have that didn't want to slow down the process. And. Um, it's under a time limit. We're not. No. We've got yeah, some yeah. time limits, you know, but we're, we're not at the end of a 30 or 60 day session no. and we're done. Yeah. So, so let me ask you, where, where are we right now? Well, my hope is that, that we can uh, send this to full council for the consideration of the full council. And, and by the time it gets to the full council, they should have enough time to look over and and, uh, and and have any amendments or, or concerns or whatever at, at full council so we can have a full discussion with the full council. Okay, let me, but you let want me. to make some recommendations in here before you send it? <laughs> yeah, which is the, the amendment and, and the ones that I talked about. Okay. Yeah. All right, let me, let's do a little cleanup here. There needs to be some cleanup because I see another item that says six down here. Where is it? Page 39, line 38. Yeah. Mayor or six, that should mean five. Well, continuing on to page four. And then the next page also, emergency meetings says six. That's line five on page 40. Five, we just put five here. Okay. I didn't see any others, but there may be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, let me oh, make, a, right let ahead me make a stab at this. One, you make sure I don't miss something. Okay. So on page 39 in the red line item on line four, where it says the city manager may place an item on the agenda, you want that eliminated, correct? Uh, it, it doesn't matter to me whether it's eliminated or not. Uh, I have no problem with the city manager. I, I understand the concern that Councillor Hildebrand has. Uh, well, if it's going to be that big an emergency, we're going to have a special meeting anyway. Yeah. Right. So you can't do anything for 72 hours. Well, and, and I'll, give, so, I'll give you an example of, of why I think uh, uh, Councillor Hildebrand <laughs> has a point in the march the march meeting that we had we had an agenda and then we had an addendum to the agenda which was the bucket and that that was placed from what i understand was placed by the city manager in urgence of another city councilor well, but, I mean, I, I, this whole red lettering here has got a conflict. You got to take one of the one of the sentences. Yeah, that's how come uh, Josh put it, uh, and or I mean, or uh, you pick one or the other. Pick yeah, any should say either that. one of. I didn't want to leave or in there. No, I think you just need to eliminate that first line to the period following the word agenda. Yep, on line four. I think we just need to pull that out. The city manager Maybe. may place an item on the agenda. You're saying strike that. Is that what you're saying? That's that's what I'm saying. Okay. And then the city manager shall not place an item on the agenda without being directed to do so by the mayor or five city councilors. Yep. Leave that leave that sentence in. I think that gets where you want to go. May I? Sure. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Councillor Corn, uh, just for proper writing, it, the better way, I, I, and it's just an opinion as all it is, instead of saying that the city manager shall not, the better way would be to say that the city, because we're giving direction to the manager, the city manager may place an item on the agenda with the direction to do so by, instead of the shall not in the, in the opposite. Okay. That's fine. Let's get the legal guys to clean that up. So, may only, may only. The city manager wow. may place an item on the agenda with the direction of six councilors or five councilors, sorry. May only. Or the mayor. Or the mayor, okay. I'll do that and then amend the rest of the document to reflect five city council members. Wherever, yeah. It's, wherever it is. Yeah. Okay. Eight. As well. Eight. 17, 17 38, 38 and maybe more mm -hmm. it's 40 is on line five and i didn't see it anywhere else but we, we, i read through this and i'm i think that's most of it yeah. and then you know, are you proposing well it's amended first that that amendment would go on uh, page uh page 44 44 right under three instead of adding uh, trying to renumber the whole thing just add three a to it which would be the objective of standing committee uh, the standing committee shall be uh, be as prescribed by city ordinance on page 44. yeah way down the bottom down the bottom on yeah. line 41. Well, 40, 44 uh, right after line 44, you would add 3A. Yeah. B, B, 3A. B, 3A. Okay. That's part of the motion. Okay. There being a second. I second that. Any further discussion? There being none. All in favor, signify. Aye. 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 All opposed? New opposition motion so passage said you move that. Uh, it's a clarification that was to the full city council, right? Yeah, moved to the city council. Right. You sure you don't want to send it to general services? No. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> I think it's an infrastructure item. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs>
go to your apartment. <laughs> okay, it's just I hope that gives us clarity. What we're looking for yeah. the rules to live by. I think so. so item number four of the agenda, additional use for mm -hmm. and, and this again was was my recommendation to put it on the, the agenda. And the reason that I I uh, suggested that we put it on the agenda is because I talked to Mr. Mavers, and we've had a problem with the uh, the racetrack, the uh, Alien City Speedway, that uh, got the one out on, on uh, Atkinson. Atkinson, Atkinson. Yep. They they've been they've been approved since 2016, I believe. 17, I thought, but it was yeah. 16, 17, but they don't seem to be able to follow the conditions that they agree to. And, and so from my understanding, my talk with Mr. Mavers is our, our policies don't have enough teeth to be able to address the issue with them. Am I correct? I've got a, actually got an entire presentation that I want to talk about, if if you'll allow me. The I want to talk about the uh, state of our current development code, which is very ambiguous with reference to conditional use permits. Uh, the direction I think that we need to go, based upon the experiences that we've had with Alien Motor Speedway as well as some other things, and then uh, get instruction from the uh, committee about the path forward. Okay, let's go ahead. The um, just give me a can we close the go to meeting minimize windows or minimize there we go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Again, the, the purpose as uh, Council Rapesa has uh, outlined here was discuss the background and the need for implementation of an updated conditional use permit process. And I use the word updated. Uh, in its most liberal sense, the reality is we do not have a section within our current zoning and development code that specifically addresses our ability to, to not just implement effectively conditioning use permits, but then also to uh, control the problems that are created by people who do not comply with their conditions of approval. The uh, and how come it's not going? You can get it close, right? Maybe too far. In the city of, uh, when I arrived in the city uh, a little over a year ago, uh, Deputy City Manager Matthews handed me a list of seven items that he wanted me to work on, like, immediately. One of those seven items was an update to the city's current zoning ordinance. Uh, amending the conditional use permit section is one of the highest priority items because it really does affect our code enforcement division's ability to enforce the, uh, regu the city's regulations. And again, uh, the other thing that's driving this, of course, the cannabis uh, legislation came down from the state, uh, started driving this. But infill development is also going to drive the need for an updated uh, ordinance. As infill development proceeds throughout the city, the conflicts will arise between existing residents and new businesses. Also, as the way we do business changes, we're probably going to end up with some conflicts that need to be addressed, and we need to have an effective program for uh, addressing these issues. The city, though, on top of everything else, has shown a desire to become more business friendly and wishes to encourage and facilitate the new business as well as provide new business, recreation, and entertainment options. However, it's both impossible and impractical uh, to attempt to anticipate the variety of new opportunities, and the provision should be made to review proposals on an individual basis through an update of the SUP and the CUP process. A okay. couple of definitions for you so that we understand the difference between an SUP and a CUP. A special use permit is the type of development permit issued by the Planning and Zoning Commission that authorizes the recipient of the permit to make use of property in accordance with the requirements and any additional requirements or special provisions. Whenever you go in for a uh, SUP now, in addition to your standard 
uh, approval, you get a letter that goes along with it from the uh, planning department. And these are the special provisions. These are minor little things that may need to be done in order for the uh, project to proceed forward. The city council was just privy to this process last month. We had a, uh, we had a, uh, actually an appeal to come forward on that church. Okay, the special provisions that were implemented at that time by the city council, you limited the hours of operation and you asked that no alcohol be consumed on board. That, that information was taken, put into a letter, added into the approval packet and handed back to the, the, uh, uh, the applicant so that they could continue forward. Okay, the SUP is a specific approval for a land use that have been determined to be more intense and potentially have a greater permit than a, impact than a permitted use. We have three different categories of, of uses in any given zoning district. There are permitted uses. These are uses that are just authorized because of that zoning district. You have special uses, which are something that's a little bit, that deviates slightly from the permitted uses, but then you have conditional uses, and these are more intense uses. We'll get to those in a minute, okay? Conditional use permit, similar definition, until you get down to the part where we require conditions of approval, which are imposed. Again, when we put a project through and it goes before the planning commission or the city council, and you've seen these conditions of approval now with the uh, cannabis uh, uh, projects that have been coming through. Three or four pages, very specific, very detailed about what is required in order for these uh, to operate because of their potential impacts on the surrounding community. Okay. A CUP, again, a specific approval for a land use that has been determined to be more intense or have a potentially greater impact than a permitted use or a special use. So in order of operations, you have your permitted uses, which have the least impact on the, on the district. You have special uses, which might have a minor impact, but which can be covered with relatively modest special provisions, and then you have conditional uses up at the very top. These are the most intense uses that potentially have a harmful effect that if we do not implement conditions of approval, conditions of operations, and things like that, could have a negative impact on the community. This is what Council Oropesa has been uh, dealing with now for well, at least the last three, this is the third year of their, of their operation. The first two years, I believe during COVID, they weren't, they were building and doing things, but this is our third year of operation now. And we found ourselves very hamstrung by the fact that we have no enforcement provisions in our ordinance. So that's where we deviate. Okay. Again, special provisions and conditions of approval. Unless otherwise authorized by the Planning and Zoning Commission, special provisions or conditions of approval imposed on a project must be satisfied prior to the itch issuance of a certificate of occupancy or a business license and prior to commencement of operations. This is where we've fallen down on, a, on uh, many of the older projects is that we put these things forward and there's been no follow through because we have no enforcement mechanism within our current zoning and development code. So people get their conditions of approval, they start working, they're issued even a provisional occupancy permit and they're allowed to move forward and there's no way to get them back at, into uh, full compliance without br quite literally bringing them in front of the city council and revoking their operational permits or their business license. Okay. The enforcement, again, uh, this is where we have to build this into the program. In addition to providing for new types of development and providing mitigation measures to minimize adverse impacts, the purpose of the update for SUPs and CUPs is to create an enforcement mechanism that will allow the Community Development Department, and it's the full department, the Planning and Zoning Division and the Code Enforcement Division primarily, the ability to enforce the special provisions and the conditions of approval. Such enforcement may include penalties and fines up to and including denial of the permit, suspension of the permit, revocation, or absolute surrender of the permit, which would cease their operations. This is the path forward, and this is where the discussion can begin with all of you. The path forward would be to authorize the Community Development Director to draft an amendment to the zoning ordinance, amending section eight of the uh, uh, zoning ordinance to include additional provisions for special use permits and conditional use permits. You can see the handout that I've given you, that is a very rough draft. Please 
do not uh, hang on, put a lot of faith in that other than I took what we did for the cannabis ordinance and I cut it in here and made some suggestions. This is not near complete, but it shows you the amount of information. All the stuff in red is the changes we need to make uh, as a minimum to the, uh, uh, to the zoning and development code, from my perspective. Oh, the, uh, beyond that, we would present the zoning ordinance uh, amendment to the Planning and Zoning Commission, because this is a land use uh, type of uh, document. It goes to the Planning and Zoning Commission first for their input and information. Once they uh, review it, it goes on to legal committee because it will have to be adopted as an ordinance. Legal committee will need to review it. And then once legal committee is finished with their review, pass it on to the full city council for public hearing and adoption. And at that point. Mr. Chairman, uh, real quick, go, I'm gonna go back a little bit. I wanna make sure that the record's clear that on the previous item, my motion, Mr. Chairman was to amend first, and then we need another motion to adopt. Do we not get that right? Okay, correct. Pardon? To, to amend not the amendment. This? No. Yes. Okay, we need a motion to we adopt it as amended. It was adopted as amended. Okay, all right. I'll just make sure the record's clear. Okay. We should be okay with that. So yes. back on this problem. Um, are they doing any better than they have in the past? No. No, as a matter of fact, if you, uh, I keep keep track of the, the comings and goings out there. And this year, because of the high cost of fuel and other things associated with racing, attendance is way down, way down. So they're, I'm not sure where their revenues, what their revenue status is. I do know that because they've had smaller events, they are finishing closer to 10 o'clock than they have in the past but they're still going past 10 o'clock at night. Well, if, if I can just kind of right. give a, a brief history. They, they came before the, the planning and zoning back in 2016, and I think they were approved for 2017, if I'm not mistaken. And, and one of the things that they agreed to was that they would run up to 10 o'clock, but they were allowed to run till 11 o'clock in case of special circumstances like rain or there was a wreck in the in the in the racetrack or, or some other kind of situation however as far as i can remember they've only gone to 10 o'clock maybe twice out of the three years that they've been running as a matter of fact in 2020 they went till one o'clock in the morning on Labor Day uh, weekend, they went Friday at one o'clock, Saturday till one o'clock, and then they went to uh, Sunday as well, which they generally don't. But those were the conditions that, that they agreed to, but they never, they've never followed the conditions. They have always gone beyond 10 o'clock most of the time, they'll go pretty close to 11 o'clock. I think within the last two, three years, I mean, two, three weeks, they actually stopped at 10, 15, 20, 10, 21, 10, 40, somewhere in that area. But the other thing that they started doing, uh, and I think it was last year for Easter, they, they brought in entertainment. Uh, this was uh, Spanish music. And, and they went till past 11, 11.30 or something like that. And, and they were telling you, and, and I, I think you will remember mm -hmm. that in, in one of the legal committees that, that I was there, or it might have been in the, one of the full council committees, I don't remember. But there was a gentleman that represented them that stood right there by you and you were telling us that you were adamant that that uh, entertainment event did not happen in their uh, in their property, that it happened somewhere down the street with another, another uh, resident. And I stood outside the, the gate listening to the music because they had a, a, a band on a trailer as a platform 
and they had the music blasting out and the lights going on and so forth, but they still would not agree that that event happened in their place. That and and, it's, and I remember that event because I, I dug into that quite a bit further after it. The confusion comes from the fact that the Hoorah Events Center, okay, has multiple buildings, and the Hoorah Events Center includes not just Alien Motor Speedway, but a number of additional buildings. All of them have different addresses, okay? The current CUP is only for the racetrack. The rest of the event center doesn't fall under that, but that was where the confusion was because the reports I had was an address that was not the address for Alien Motor Speedway. Okay, it was for one of the other buildings on the site. But the question that remains: that it, even if that is well, I, I won't I won't say even if that is true. I'm sure it is true. The the fact that it it wasn't under the condition of the racetrack itself. Mm -hmm then they were violating the nuisance ordinance. city ordinance, which is 10 o'clock that they should have stopped. My question is, I mean, if we have a nuisance ordinance, why hasn't that actually been utilized? Because at the, at the planning and zoning, again, they were, given, they were given permission to run till 11 in case of those unforeseen circumstances. And I guess in their mind, it just means that they can go till 11 o'clock regardless. Oh, and it, it, if you read the way, and, and Parker or Josh, you guys can help me out here. If you read the way our nuisance ordinance is written, the noise provisions are only for residential neighborhoods. We have a facility here that's zoned industrial. So the, the, the provisions are, are, uh, are completely different, which is again, you know, I, for, I was not here when this project was approved originally okay the right after i got here probably like the second public hearing i think is when councilor pesa made me aware of the uh, uh problems that they were having out there and digging into the the uh, ordinance again part of the problem is even though there are conditions of approval tied to that particular project our ability to enforce those conditions of approval is almost non-existent because we don't have any enforcement provisions in our current ordinance, with the exception of cannabis, which we just wrote and passed. And that's a completely separate part of the municipal code. And so, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but they don't have a, a, a they have a, a temporary permit, right? Yes. So they don't, they have never been authorized to fully have a, a full time, they were they were authorized uh, by my predecessor to begin operations without having completed all of the things that they were supposed to complete. Things like noise attenuation walls, ADA bathrooms, paved parking areas. There's there's uh, there's quite a bit of stuff. Um, the one thing that I they have a full blown they have a full blown. Uh, adopted uh, conditional use permit. What they have, what they don't have, is a is a certificate of occupancy. Uh, right. That whenever that happened, they were issued a, a temporary certificate of occupancy. And technically speaking, those are only supposed to last for six months. But they've been continuing to hobble along on that temporary certificate, basically since the time that they were issued the conditional use permit until this day. And uh, you know, that's that's where they're at right now. Yeah, because, and the reason it's been getting reissued, much like building permits, is every time we check in with them, they have been able to report that they have moved forward on something. They've been focusing on bathrooms, they've been focusing on parking areas, they've been focusing on the uh, uh, some of the other things. The other thing we were able to do, and I was able to get them to agree on, which is a good, uh, and I did it just based on the negotiations and uh, with them, is they did, start requiring mufflers, race mufflers for everything, which is something that never was required, which did result in a pretty significant noise reduction. The race mufflers limit the uh, uh, exhaust noise to 100 decibels at 100 feet. Now, when you combine that though with a whole bunch of other cars running at the same time, you still get a cumulative effect of significant noise. Uh, so that hasn't proven as effective as we had hoped. The uh, a couple of the other things, and this is where uh, 
Councilor Ropeza had uh, told me the story about the uh, being running until midnight at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. on Labor Day. Uh, we went back and we negotiated with them the to get them to at least, uh, and the way the condition is written is that they are to schedule the races to end at 10 p.m. That's and that. Uh, just because it is a sporting event, if for un unforeseen, but gave them that window to finish their their event. I mean, just like you would with a football game or, or anything else, because it is a sporting event. You cannot, uh, well, I guess with Little League Baseball, if it gets 10 o'clock at night, midweek, you can cut it off. But for this kind of sporting event, and their concerns have been, and they are legitimate, that in the summer in particular, when it's hot and the sun is still up, you end up with a difficult time prepping the track, getting enough moisture in it, so it works, so you can present a safe operation. And then you've got the sun shining right in uh, everybody's eyes when they come around the farm as well. So there's there's a, a lot of moving parts here, but the bottom line is that when it comes to any kind of significant enforcement, anything we can do from the planning zoning department or the, um, yeah, Code enforcement office. We are exceedingly limited, and it's not just with with Alien Motor Speedway. It's with any project that's got a conditional use permit or a special use permit. So, working with and the uh, the issues that we found out recently with uh, some of the uh, uh, massage parlors and things, the issue has come uh, to the front. And so, with Council Rapaz's help, uh, and we've been putting things together, and we're hoping to get authorized to go ahead and finish putting this together, present it to the planning commission, bring it back to the legal committee and move it forward. Okay. Don't no, just... I have to see where Mr. Mavers, you know, there's no teeth in what we got. No. As, as what you're saying is so why even have the rules if we got no teeth? And so we got to put some teeth into some things to make them, if they want to run to 11, Okay, here's the penalty for our deal, whatever the thing is. And when we, once we get this done, we can bring them back. We can revise our conditions of approval and the conditions of approval can specifically say that that uh, if you choose to run after a certain time of night, that there will be fines and penalties. Uh, and if you do it more than X number of times a year that you lose, possibly uh, are subject to uh, revocation. Yeah. But the, the, the conditional use permit and the the uh, conditions of approval uh, provide a significant level of uh, oversight for projects that have potentially negative impacts to the surrounding neighborhoods. Yeah, we don't want to be business friendly here, but we've got to have some rules. And if you break the rules, there's, here's the consequences for breaking the rules. So you can choose to break them or not. The other thing that uh, the modification will do, and this is where the business friendly uh, situation comes in. Uh, thanks to COVID, the way we're doing business is changing dramatically. We're getting uh, requests and, and other things coming in almost on a daily basis that don't quite fit our ordinance. But by having the special use permits and the conditional use permit process, you can take these people that are coming in with new ideas, innovative ideas, other things, and okay, it doesn't quite fit, but if we put an SUP over the top of it, and then we can take it forward, we can add these additional provisions on a case-by-case -case basis that will allow our entrepreneurs and our innovators and, and people that want to come to town and, and start new businesses a path forward. Right now, if we go strictly by the zoning and development code, because there hasn't been a significant update to it in many, many years, we were really, it's kind of by guess and by golly, whether or not things work. Where are we in that process? In terms of updating the entire code? Yeah. This will be the first major amendment to it, okay? The, uh, the amendments, major overall amendments to the zoning and development code were uh, uh, put on hold while we spent uh, six months more than that, actually, doing the uh, cannabis ordinance. The cannabis ordinance was uh, a very, as you guys all have seen, it's a very comprehensive ordinance, but it was actually, we used it as a test platform to put together conditional use permit requirements and a lot of other things. So we're just taking what we've done in the cannabis ordinance, moving it over, and then we'll do some shuffling 
of the uh, of the requirements, and uh, we'll uh, we'll end up with a much more usable ordinance, one that's got a lot of teeth in it. We're still going to have to go back through some of the specific sections of residential, mixed use, and other things, and make some adjustment on a one by one basis. But this is a good place to start because this this lays the groundwork for implementation and also enforcement. Please. I know the planning and zoning is a statutorily uh, committee, commission, whatever you want to call it. But they should should they not be following the uh, uh, city ordinances as well before they they make their decision? I mean, uh, obviously the city ordinance has ten o'clock as as a nuisance. But they they went ahead and, and approved eleven o'clock as as a time. Again, that's the 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 purpose of a conditional use permit is to allow certain flexibility. But I don't have a copy of the nuisance ordinance. So I could go, but I believe where noise is concerned and dust and other things like that, it's pretty specific that it's in a residential area. And granted, there's residential units uh, still in existence all around Alien Motor Speedway. But if you look at the zoning map, it's it's mostly zoned I-1. So it's a it's an area in transition within the city. So with the, with the SUP and, and CUP, would that be something that the Senate Zoning and Code uh, Commission would be able to negotiate or? or... Oh, that's, that's the whole point. That's the, is that the we put together, we sit down with the, uh, you allow your, your uh, somebody comes to us with an application, okay? Um, we determine that a conditional use permit is required. We review their application and then we uh, we apply best practices to come up with draft conditions of approval. Those draft conditions of approval and the application are then for the planning commission. The planning commission then reviews those. They have the right to to modify, to append, to uh, uh, to do well, much like the city council, but all with the land use decisions vested primarily in the planning and zoning commission statutorily by by the state. The, uh, their ability to though, negotiate these things is, uh, uh, unless there is a city ordinance that specifically states that uh, all outdoor events of any type shall end by 10 o'clock, they have the ability to, to do some different things. And the, it's like the, I'm gonna use the cannabis uh, uh, stuff as an example, since one of the things we talked about extensively was hours of operation. Okay. Under a conditional use permit or a special use permit, you have every right to limit hours of operation. The planning commission has a right to limit hours of operation. Okay. And the people that it's much like a city council, in fact, we actually have uh, stricter requirements on land use decisions in terms of public notification, uh, the area of a public hearing. So we have to send out, we send out hundreds of public notification notices for every land use decision that goes on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I noticed that one section of this handout, I just got it, so I haven't had a chance to really. Um, on page five of eight, under special uses, are followed to delineate four forts, no forts, land fields. And then you can see in new language, we put them back in. So are you just moving where they are in the list of stuff? Is that what you're doing? Well, again, this is, a, please, this is a very, very rough draft with just some initial thoughts. But a, uh, again, because most of, most of what's driving this is noise and interface related. I know that our heliports right now for the two hospitals are immediately adjacent to to uh, residential areas. Yeah. Okay. I, I do believe that it would be appropriate uh, to, uh, even for our hospitals, and even though the heliport is an ancillary use to the hospital, that the adjacent neighborhood should be notified and have be able to have some input on the location. I know we just got some feedback, I believe, about the heliport at the uh, Loveless Hospital. 
Miami and their current overflights now go directly over the neighborhood to the north. And uh, with some of the wind we've been having and everything, every time they take off and land, just debris and, and things uh, all over those neighborhoods here. Well, we got to, I've heard more from people that I know that live around both hella parts. Um, the problem you've got with those is that if there's not an emergency, they're not in use. So you've got a big fight coming on about that eventually. Because I'm telling you, I don't care if I wake up the neighbors, if I'm the guy in the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, and and uh, most the other know thing, it's there when they purchase the house. Well, I, just, I, want, I want everybody to know that I'm hurt for anyone. Uh, and so I don't know. Where we're going to well, the 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 thing also to remember is that anybody that's in existence right now today okay, becomes uh, is and I don't like this term, but I'm gonna use it anyway. They are grandfathered in. They're not gonna be, their methods of operation are not gonna change unless they come back for a major expansion, an update, an upgrade, if their change of use, things like that uh, would trigger some. I know we've got a couple of the local uh, senior living facilities uh, that have recently been sold and changed hands. Uh, one of them did come back and uh, was granted a, a zone change for the possibility of, of resale and, and for changeover. Uh, those uh, potentially, uh, depending on who the end user ends up and depending how quickly we move forward, those kind of significant changes of use may fall under this and therefore we would have the ability. But it's this is a process that uh, in, in addition to modifying uh, what we're doing here, it's a process that I am implementing at the uh, at the staff level our current staff uh, has never had to write detailed conditions of approval they've never had, to, had the responsibility for putting together special provisions so this is a uh, this is a pretty significant undertaking at the staff level as well as at the planning commission and ultimately city council level okay can you point in this where your vessel is Reinforcement that we have consideration with the city manager involved in this process so that we could see. Because what I heard Mr. Meaver say was that he was entrusted with this on initial hire, and here we are a year later. I understand cannabis. I'll make an editorial comment about cannabis in a second. Cannabis overtook all of this. Let's see, and I understand your concerns, and, and I, one I get is going to drive it down to Main Street, and the car next to me has got this stereo so damn loud, and you know what are you going to do about that? But I would like to see Mr. Mavers back on point as the point that you all gave him direction upon his hire that we see something and know when we're going to see that. As a product, sure. and then we, if you don't mind, we don't will not have any more dialogue about this until we see something that all encompassing. Again, I don't want to see pieces and pieces and pieces of the whole picture, and because pieces don't do any good. <laughs> this could be a three hump camel when we get finished. If we do it by pieces, and I'm just not, I'm just not going to go down that road. So. I give you that instruction now, because if it comes in pieces, I will tell you right now, I won't put it on the agenda. You're talking about a multi-hundred page document. Well, I and mean, if that's what we have to go do, is that what you were not asked to do? <laughs> well, I mean, you tell me. I wasn't here when they hired you and told you these are your responsibilities. <laughs> it was it was always anticipated that we would, we would take things in uh, reasonable chunks and update okay. those sections that were uh, in the order in which it made most logical sense. Well then, I will I say we're not gonna change that, but you're gonna, you, you. city manager, you understand where we're coming from, okay. where this is gonna go and how it's gonna go. 
So not saying we're changing anything on you, Mr. Meavers, or we're asking you to create this new dictionary. Uh, but again, I don't want it in chunks because that's just not the way I like to look at things. I want to look at the whole thing. Um, actually, if I may, sir, uh, I'm actually, it makes me a little easy. And I always go with my gut instinct. And the minute I read this, uh, knowing our community, our community um, is a little um, concerned about change. And this is pretty intense. Um, a lot of these zoning things, to me, that's why I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I would want to study it for a long time, be very thoughtful, and you know, um, hitting them with some changes all at once through the whole thing can, well, they're a little skittish on that, you know. Um, and so that it just kind of concerns me as far as because of the responses that I've gotten back from people over time who have been going through um the you know the ordinances are going through trying to get zoning or permits or anything like that um well they're just um they're not comfortable with you know because i actually understand what mr mavers is doing here i understand that he's actually bringing our our regulations and rules up to speed and i actually think it's you know it, it needs to be done but at the same time the intensity is what I'm concerned about. I don't disagree. So I would like to see something come back at a later date that's coordinated. And, uh, you know, there might be more of a discussion. But in the meantime, there's absolutely nothing we can do with Andy Speedway as far as the fact that they're. Um, I mean, not under the current condition of use permit guidelines. And not even under noise ordinances. The, this is where I would have to rely on our uh, city attorney. The, yes, the noise ordinance does have some capability, but again, we're dealing with an I zone, an I one zone. We're not dealing with a residential zone. Right. So it doesn't necessarily apply. There may be some provision, and this would be uh, we were able to get them early on back in front of the planning commission to discuss their situation. We did negotiate some additional conditions of approval. They agreed to all of those, but again, enforcement is a problem. For sure. It always comes down to enforcement. Question, Mr. Chair. Where is your enforcement in here? For the um, enforcement provisions begin on the bottom of page two of eight. SUP or CUP denial, suspension, revocation, surrender, and appeal. We uh, built in an appeal process there as well. Okay. And, but this gives us the ability at the staff level to, if they make a material misrepresentation on their application, to deny their application. If they fail to operate under the provisions, we can go in and um, potentially uh, red tag them or deny their permit, cease their operations. Uh, if they disagree with uh, what staff does, they have the ability to appeal to the city manager and ultimately to the city council. But the uh, one of the things we we want to try to do is to is to give us the authority to do something administratively here in City Hall, as opposed to citing somebody under an ordinance and having them uh, they get a citation for noise. It's 500 bucks or whatever it is, and then they continue to operate until they go in front of the judge and the judge says. Well, thank you very much. Fine, reduced to twenty nine bucks or costs, and they're on their way again. It it accomplishes the the uh, nothing, accomplishes next to nothing. We, there's nothing we can do about the twenty nine dollars. That's yeah. a voted position, so so be it. But it's the it's we can we can we maybe change these things whether they're mandatory or the judge doesn't have a decision. And so that's how you have to address those things. Yeah, that they become again, set, and 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 that's the way they work. So. And, I, and, and I'm just going to make one editorial comment before we leave, or before you have to leave, Councilor Perry. But, you know, we went through this whole process of the cannabis ordinance. And we made every one of these individuals go back through the original process. And every one of those individuals, nothing changed under a conditional use permit. 
Everybody was smooth sailing. And guess what? We had to hear them all. We could have fixed that one go around at one council meeting, and we had to go through this five times, six times so far. And they could have been fixed. And we're not consistent with our decision. And so that is this chair's editorial comment on that, because there was no need to go through what we did. We could have had that all fixed at one council meeting. So that's the editorial. Let's move on to item number six or not item number five which is a non-action item and that i move i make a motion from the chair i want to make a motion we postpone this because Councilor perry is going as a prior engagement and he is delayed in picking up his spouse and it could be in oh. hot water thank you for your kindness <laughs> and love will be friendly tonight <laughs> Thank you. And congratulations on your yes, award for tonight. Thank you very much. All right. Good. So, do I have a second on that one? Second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, God, let's discuss it. <laughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, there being no opposed, that item is postponed. So, how come the conditional use permits got? There was nothing to go on there. Well, it should have been under a non-action item. Should Just have been. Editorial comment from a member of the committee. You have to go right ahead. <laughs> go right ahead. All right. It should have been a non-action item. But, okay. So there so being nothing to vote on that. there, so it just moved on. Okay. So and right. we struck items six, seven, and eight. Uh, and that we will you know, sit, give an explanation to these guys. Yeah, I'm on. Open it up to, uh, I know public participation is down towards the end, but we're going to go to public participation <laughs> and let you all have an opportunity to understand that when that ordinance was passed by council back in October, was it not October, Mr. Meavers? Um, yes, October 26th. Yeah. That there was no process or procedure written at that point in time when that ordinance was passed. There was no way to figure out how to administer the program. And, you know, I'm gonna discuss this because item number six is my development. I said, well, how do I get paid? You don't know. We have to write some processes and procedures. That's not your fault. That's not my fault. But the ordinance would pass. But there was no process and procedures how to get it done. So how are you going to know where to put your road out there? If you don't have a process, procedure, and a roadmap, how are you going to do it? Well, that's why these items were, were changed and we're supposed to be discussing the process and procedures and who gets the money. You know, Share the email with you. That's right. But everybody understood. That's right. They didn't have. They didn't have a process of how to go through it. How do you do it? The ordinance, if you go back and read the ordinance, this is, I don't think it's, it's up there. We don't have the ordinance, but you all can get it and look at it. But tell me how, tell me how it says, go through the process. We're going to go through the process so we all understand the process. That's what we're going to go through. And then I'm going to have to recuse myself at the time. Yeah. Pardon? Absolutely, I was. I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that. I don't call me a Nancy Pelosi, sir. No. You can think what you want, but don't you call me a Nancy Pelosi ever. Well, and it's all right. It's all right. 
It's already policy. It's already an order. But we need to know what the policy, we need to know what the procedures are. That's what we need to know. It's going to get back on the agenda. But we're going to see what the procedures are. I've had conversation with the city manager saying we need to know this. It took time. Mr. Meavers was asked to write these policies and or the procedures to do that. What well, a month you were asked several months ago. We finally got it a month ago, three weeks ago. Councillor, policies and procedures have been in place, but they were just much like since the beginning of the year. Now they were never written down in the format that they are now. They have been clarified yeah. for you. Right. Uh, but the the I think what we're getting into here, and, and I'd like to go ahead and I put together a presentation because I want to walk everybody through it because there's a lot of rumor, a lot of misinformation going around right now about the program, about how it should be implemented. The ordinance when it was passed, and I'll go over all, laid out a framework only. That's all it was intended to do. Yeah. Lay out a framework. Hmm? Yeah. Yes, sir. We pulled these off the agenda, didn't we? Now we're discussing them. Yeah, true. So we, so. Uh, we, we did not do that. Awesome. Okay. But it's coming back. We're spending money every day out there based on incentive package. We're not using the incentive. It's a reimbursement program. We are using it for. Well, can I can I tell you my version of this? Is that no? We can have oh, the agenda. Okay, discussing this. All right. The, the, uh, I, I I know you're here, and I know it's kidding, but no, I, I understand the way the system works. But the, the you can I can have some one-on-one -on -one discussion. I'm fine with that. Well, we probably need to because yeah. there's and I'll have some one-on-one. -on -one Calling Nancy Pelosi ever? Yes, you did, and I take offense to that. So my, my only thing, and I'll stay, I'll stay off. I just have to stay off the money. topic. But this this program. So the city of Roswell. I've been working in the city of Roswell now for twenty years. I've been a contractor here. I've worked on all the water mains. I've done everything there is to do here. Development. Excuse me. Can we go ahead and go to the re reports and then adjourn the meeting, and yeah. then you can discuss that. Yes. Yeah. Would you do? Do your thing. Am I doing that? Okay. So, city clerk, just, acting uh, city clerk, I guess. Correct. Uh, just the department reports. If we want to go over those. I think if you've all have done those, we owe you the responsibility to listen to those. All in your packet. Don't. If you have any questions yeah. for if anybody, have any questions? Mr. Chair, you may want to ask the people that are on if there's anybody. Yeah. You we'll we'll get to that public participation here in a minute. It was not. Okay. I don't see it. Yeah, we don't have it here. Yeah. It stops working. Yeah. Do it by memory. Do it by memory. No. Just burn it. I didn't hear it. Yeah, that's our start one. Yeah. One on one. Pick one on one. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, that's part of Order 97, and I'm approved. There we go. Got it. Okay. All right. Okay. Put in there. Yeah, touch your stuff. Chair, I'd say okay, just so. because of time, if you have questions, oh, staff, anybody have any questions, or, staff. or if you have questions okay. after you read the report, cool. feel free to give us a call. Okay. <laughs> I'm not short the staff at all. I'm not trying to short the staff. Yeah, we, we put on these so you guys do a lot of work to do this. I think they want to go home. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, it's dinner time. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask for public participation. Is there anyone that wishes to have any comment? There being none, meeting adjourned.
Hey, listen to me. You got the same requester 42 times. What? The same requester 42 times. 